So as I was saying that uh, we are going to be talking about the basic principles uh, that we need to understand. These are the basics. These are the foundational because everything that you're going to stack in terms of knowledge of the financial markets, you need to be stacking on top of these. Because once you want, if you have a clear understanding of what I'm going to share with you shortly, then it will make your trading experience better, simpler, and much more fruitful, right? So essentially, we are going to be looking at the five principles. And it all starts with, uh, obviously, inflation, right? So inflation is the key one. So we need to understand that inflation drives interest rates expectations. That is paramount for us to actually understand, for us to, to absorb or digest that, that specific statement, that inflation drives interest rate expectations. So it'll, it'll be essentially vague for me to just say that without explaining or going into, into deeper or finer details of how or the importance of inflation in terms of driving interest rate expectations. One of the key things is because markets move based on future expectations. So markets do not move, okay, they react to what is happening today but the reason they are reacting to what is happening today, it is because of what they are expecting in the future based on what is happening today. So if you get if you get an inflation reading today and it shows that inflation went lower today, the reason why markets will move aggressively, it is because they are pricing in something in the future. They are expecting something in the future based on the, on the inflation reading that we got today. So in it might either be because they're expecting that that specific central bank is going to cut interest rates. So now it means interest rate interest rates are now being expected to go lower. But in essence, markets move based on future expectations, right? So inflation drives interest rate expectations. So a couple of things we need to, or a couple of questions we need to ask ourselves in reference to inflation. So this is the first principle, right? I'm going to share just five, just five basic principles. So... The first question is, where is inflation in relation to the target? So what target am I talking about? Every central bank has an inflation target, right? So most developed economies have an inflation have an inflation target of 2%. So what is the significance of this inflation target? So this inflation target actually helps us to actually determine whether inflation is high or low for that specific economy. So perfect example. If we're looking at the United States or the, the, the United States economy, the, the, the central bank's inflation target is 2%. So that means that if inflation in the United States is at 3%, it's at 4%, then that inflation is high because why? It is above their 2% target. If inflation is at 1% or 0.5%, then it means that what? Inflation is low. Why? Because it is below they are, they are what? They are target, right? So that is the first key thing we need to always have a clear understanding of when it comes to inflation. Where is inflation in relation to the target, right? We're going to go into some examples after this, but these are the questions that we'll be answering. So this is the first question that we need to answer, right? We need to answer. Then the second question would be, is it rising or falling, right? So now, We've established whether inflation is above the target or below the target. Now, the second question would be, is it rising or falling? So if it's above the target, is it falling? Which means that it is moving from 4% to 3% to 2.5. So it's falling and moving closer to the 2% to the, to, to the target. Or is it rising? Which means that it is above the target, but it's moving from 3% to 4% to 6%, so on and so forth, you know? So... So that is that is essentially how we need to actually how we need to actually approach this, right? This is how we need to actually approach fundamental analysis specifically with regards to inflation. So that is the second question. So we've established where the target is for the central bank. Now the second question is in reference to the target, is inflation falling or is inflation okay? Someone just uh Hey, sorry about that, guys. Uh, someone just typed in the chat. Oh, okay. Okay, no, it's fine. Okay, so, so as I was saying, guys, with reference to uh, with reference to inflation, right? We need to answer those two questions. First question: 
where is inflation in reference to the target? And every central bank has an inflation target, as you'll get to see shortly, right? Then the second thing is inflation rising or falling. When, when we're saying is inflation rising or falling, is it is with regards or with reference to the target, right? Is it falling? If it's above target, is it falling closer towards the target? If it's below the target, is it is it is it is it uh falling further below the target? So moving from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3, 0 percent, even negative, because you, you can have negative inflation, right? So those though it, it everything is in reference to the target. Then the third question is where is inflation expected to go, right? So there are inflation expectations, right? Inflation expectations come, come in the form of surveys. So there are surveys that are done for most, for yeah, I'd say for every economy, right? In terms of expectations of inflation, right? In the US, we have uh, consumer expect inflation expectations. We have the University of Michigan survey where, they, where, we ha where, where we actually get one year inflation expectation expectations, sorry, as well as five-year inflation expectations. So that is to answer that question, where is inflation expected to go? And even the central banks themselves, they actually do what they actually do quarterly projections, right? So every single quarter, they're gonna they in one of their meetings, they're gonna release what what we call quarterly projections, right? So it means that they're gonna give projections of where they expect uh unemployment to be, inflation to be uh, GDP to be as well as interest interest rates for that specific year in the next two years. So it for so for example, sorry guys. So for example, where 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 in terms of uh, the central bank, it will be for 2024, 2025, 2026. So they are gonna give projections of where they expect what of where they expect inflation to be in 2024 at the end of 2024 in 2025. And then in 2026, right? And those projections are quarterly projections, which means that every single quarter, we have four quarters in a year. So which means that four times in the year, we are actually going to do what? We are actually going to get uh, updated projections from the central bank. So the key thing there is that we need to pay attention to, are they increasing or are they decreasing the projection? So it means that if maybe let's say, in because now we, we, we in June, so let's say in March, they had projected that inflation would be, let's say, at 3.5%, right? And then now in the second quarter, in June, they release projections that, or, or they are revised projections. And then they like, now they expect that inflation is going to be at what? At 3.9. Previously in March, their projections were inflation to be at 3.4 at the end of what? At the end of 2024, right? Now they're expecting what? Now they're expecting inflation to be at 3.9 so it means that the central bank's expectations are for what are for inflation to go higher right or inflation to be more stickier or to be more stubborn in terms of falling towards the two percent target because the central bank is trying to achieve what the two percent target or whatever target it is for that specific economy right so that is the third question that we need to answer then we also need to answer the fourth question in terms of what are the expectations of interest rates so based on what based on all the all the answers that we've gathered from above right in terms of the inflation target is inflation falling or rising which means it is inflation high or low and then thirdly what are, what are, what what where is inflation expected to go so in terms of inflation expectations we've also answered that then now answering the fourth question would be what are the expectations of interest rates right now for us to answer that question we need to understand what I'm gonna share with you shortly, right? So we're gonna answer that once I've once I've explained what I'm gonna share with you shortly. So now, the the second principle, because this all of what I've been going through is what is in line with the first principle, right? Remember, I said I'm gonna share five basic principles in trading. So the first principle is that inflation drives interest rate expectations. Now the second principle is that interest rate expect expectations drive every other asset class in the financial markets, right? So that is the second uh, principle, right? So now if we have an understanding that interest rate expectations drive every other asset class in the financial markets, then, but inflation drives interest rate expectations. So that means that if we, if we are clued up and we have a clear understanding of where inflation is, where inflation is expected to go, then we can have a what? A clear 
idea of where we expect interest rates to go, either up or down. And then in that case, in that sense, it will be able to do what we will be, we will be able to have an idea of the direction that different asset classes should go in because what? Because interest rate expectations drive every other asset class in the financial markets, right? So now we're starting to put this uh, this puzzle together or we're starting to, to connect the dots between inflation expectations, inflation, sorry, as well as interest rate expectations, right? Uh, sorry, guys, please mute your mics. So we, we're trying to, to, to connect those dots, right? So now to answer the fourth question, under inflation, what are the expectations of interest rates? We need to understand that the relationship between interest rate expectations and inflation is directly proportional. So in the beginning, first thing, we have inflation, which will drive interest rate expectations. So now the relationship between inflation and interest rate expectations is directly proportional. So it means that if inflation, if, if we have established based on answering these four questions or the first three questions, sorry, that inflation is going up, then for us to answer the fourth question, which is what are the expectations of interest rates? That means that if, inf if we've established that inflation is going up, then it means that we also expect interest rates to go up because the relationship is what? Directly proportional, right? And also the true is opposite. If we've established based on answering the first three questions that inflation is going down, then it means what? It means that interest rates are also expected to go lower because like I said, the relationship between inflation and interest rate expectations is directly proportional, right? So that means that if you are clued up on what is happening with inflation, then you should have an idea of what is happening or where you expect interest rates to go because, of, because where inflation is going, that is where interest rates expectations will also be going, right? Then you will be able to do, to do what? To know the direction or have an idea of the direction of the different asset classes, right? So when it comes to different asset classes, we obviously have currencies, we have uh, metals where you're looking at gold, we have uh, energies where you're looking at oil, so on and so forth. We have um, crypto as well. We also have gold, we have, uh, sorry, not gold, I've mentioned gold. We also have uh, equities, right? In equities, in me, it's, also, it's obviously inclusive of uh, indices, stock markets, and so on and so forth, right? But those are the different asset classes, right? So now we've established the relationship between inflation and interest rates. So now we need to establish the relationship between what? Interest rate expectations and the different asset classes, right? So... For that, we are going to go quickly to the spreadsheet, right? So I'm going to open the Excel spreadsheet that, that we use. Okay, so looking at this Excel spreadsheet, first key thing just to highlight is that if we look under, in, under the inflation, right, we can see that we have targets, right? So these are the targets for the different central banks. So now, based on what I've just uh, explained shortly, is that inflation, for us to either, for us to establish whether inflation is high or low, we need to be referencing it to the watch, to the targets. And these targets are for the central banks of those different economies. As you can see, far, far left, I have currency, Australia, Canada. These are the different, what? Currencies, obviously, it means different economies, right? So the targets here are the targets for the central bank of that specific economy, right? So that is one thing I wanted to highlight. Then, secondly, is what I'm talking about in terms of, in terms of the direction or the relationship between interest rate expectations and the different asset classes, right? And I and I and I gave an idea of what different asset classes are. So where we have interest here, as you can see, if interest rates are expected to go lower or go down, and that would be obviously because inflation is also going lower, because if we can establish that interest rates are expected to go lower, and I and I have said that the relationship between inflation and interest rate expectations is directly proportional. So even if you don't know what is happening with inflation, but you are reading an article and it mentions or it is, it is stressing on the fact that 
in interest rates are expected to go low in the United States, then immediately in your head, what should click is the fact that inflation is also going low in the United States because the, the relationship is what? Directly proportional. So if interest rates are expected to go down in the, in the United States, for example, then the currency also goes down. So now it means that the relationship between interest rate expectations and the currency, the relationship there is directly proportional. Same with inflation and interest rate expectations. So it means that by just having that understanding of what is happening with inflation, is it rising or falling, you will have an idea of what to expect with interest rates, whether interest rates will be expected to go higher or to go lower. And then the third thing is, then you also have an idea of where the currency will go because the relationship between the currency and the, the relationship between the currency and the interest rate is, is, is actually directly proportional, right? So it means that if interest, if inflation is going lower, now we're going to connect the dots. So if inflation is going lower, then interest rates are also expected to go lower if they if they are not low yet. If they are low, then they are, they are expected to remain lower, right? And then it means that we also expect the currency to do what? To, to go lower, right? Because interest rates will be going lower. Why? Because higher interest attracts investments, right? So lower interest will not, will repel investors, right? So investment. So that is why, we see weakness of that currency, right? Because there's not there's not there's not many investors willing to invest their money in that specific economy because interest rates are going lower, right? So now if we're looking at it from a from a practical standpoint, if inflation is going down in the United States, then it means that interest rates are expected to go lower, or the Federal Reserve is expected to cut interest rates in the United States. So it means that we look to sell the dollar. And that is as basic as it gets, right? And then the opposite is true. If inflation is going up in the United States, then we expect the Federal Reserve to do what? To raise interest rates or to keep interest rates higher if they are already high. And then we'd expect to do what? To buy the dollar, right? So by just having the, the understanding of the two principles, which is inflation and interest rate expectations, then you can automatically know the direction on the dollar or on the currency of that specific economy that you're looking at. This does not only apply to the dollar, it applies to the South African rand or South African economy, Australian economy, New Zealand, any economy that you look at, which is why I'm teaching you from, from, a, from a perspective of understanding principles, right? This is why I am teaching you from a perspective of understanding what principles, because you can, it's not a strategy, guys. A strategy means that it works in certain environments. This is not a strategy. This is principles, right? And principles work regardless of or irregardless of who is actually working them or applying them. And this is why I'm teaching you this. So this, whatever I'm teaching you now does not only apply to the United States because I'll be making an example with the United States the most, but it applies to all other economies. Then, We've established that the relationship between interest rate expectations or interest rates and the currency is directly proportional. So if interest rates are expected to go up, then the currency is also expected to go up, which means we buy the currency. Then all the other asset classes have an inverse relationship to interest rates. So it means that they go in the opposite direction. So it means that now if interest rates are going down in the United States, then we look to sell the dollar. Then we look to buy bonds. We look to buy gold. We look to buy stocks, which are which which are indices, whatever it may be, right? Why? Because the relationship is inversely proportional. So I'm just gonna give a the purpose of today's lesson is just to show you guys the five principles, the five basic principles, right? But I'm gonna give just a just a a, a small explanation or a, yeah, a tiny explanation of why gold goes up when interest rates are going down, right? Why? Because gold is a what? is a storage of value, right? So if interest rates are going lower, then it means that what? It means that that specific currency is no longer attractive to investors, right? So where are investors going to direct their, their money? Into other economies that pay a higher interest, number one. But secondly, they are going to direct their money into what? Into gold. Because gold is, in as much as gold is a good storage of value, gold is also a what? A hedge 
against high inflation. So if interest rates keep on going lower, then real interest rates end up being what? End up being negative. What are real interest rates? Real interest rates is when you take nominal interest rates and you minus or subtract inflation, then that gives you the real yield, the real yield or real interest, right? So if inflation is higher than the interest rate, then it means that you are essentially losing money, right? You're not getting a positive return on your money because when you subtract inflation from the interest rate, then you're going to get a negative number, which means that the real interest rate is actually negative, which is why if you're saving your money in a bank and, the, and a bank is offering you 2% interest on, on, on the money that you've saved or invested, but inflation is running at 3%, then it means that you are actually your money is actually losing what losing value because inflation is higher than the interest because if you minus inflation from the two percent interest then you get a negative one right so in that case when interest rates are going lower it results in what in negative real interest rates and then that is when gold starts appreciating in value because investors are now using gold as a hedge against high inflation, right? So that is also one of the reasons. And the opposite is true. When interest rates are going up, money starts moving from gold and into the currency. Why? Because gold does not offer any interest. Gold pays zero interest. So gold is a good storage of value, but it's not going to give you interest payments, right? Like a, like a currency. So that is why when interest rates are going up, the currency will strengthen, but gold will go down because now money is, is moving from gold into what? Into the currency because the currency is offering interest, is offering a higher interest and the, and the real interest rate is now positive, right, as well. So that is essentially the dynamics there, right? Just, just in, in the, briefly, essentially. Then stocks, right? Why, why do stocks or... Remember, stocks are just companies, right? Indices are just, like I said, a collection of businesses. If it's US 30, then it's 30 companies. If it's US 500, 500 companies. US tech, which is US 100, 100 tech companies, right? But indices are essentially just a collection of businesses or a collection of stocks, if I may call it, right? But why do lower interest rates result in the stock market going up? Because... It means that if interest rates are going lower, then it's cheap to borrow money. If it's cheap to borrow money, then it means what? It means that businesses will obviously go out and borrow money. If businesses borrow money, they're going to what? Buy machinery. They're going to expand and grow. And as businesses grow and expand, what will happen? Businesses will also start hiring more people, right? If they start hiring more people, it means that what? More people are now employed. If more people are employed, that means that now businesses have more customers as well not some most businesses have more customers and then it also means what the demand of goods and services will go higher right and if the demand of goods and services goes higher right so if the demand of goods and services actually goes higher then it means that now businesses have a lot of customers which means that now potentially businesses are making more profit right so essentially now as interest rates start going lower that is what is happening in the thought process of investors, right? So investors assume, because remember, markets move based on future expectations, whether in, in interest rates are going lower today or not. But if there are expectations that they're going to go lower, the assumption is there will be what? There will be, it will be cheaper to borrow money so businesses will grow and expand and more people will get employed. And then we'll start seeing what we'll start seeing businesses, which means more profits for businesses, which means what asset prices are going to rise in value. So that is why when interest rates are going lower or expected to go lower, we start seeing what indices go up, even if the central bank is still keeping interest rates higher for longer. But if there is that expectations, because the market moves based on future expectations, it reacts to data today. But the reason it reacts to the data we get today, it's because it's pricing something in the future based on the data that we've received today. So it's very important for you to understand that. So that is the reason why when interest rates are going lower, stocks go up because future earnings of companies are, 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 are what re-evaluated to be higher because it means that what businesses will be making more money because if they're growing and, and expanding and franchising, they're opening up more stores, right? They, they're generating more revenue, right? So it means what? 
the stock price is going to go up. And that is why indices as well as the actual stocks start going up if interest rates are expected to go lower, right? And then also the true is opposite. If interest rates are going up or expected to go up, even if they're not going up yet, but if they expect it to go up, then what will happen? Gold will go lower. And I've explained why, because money is going to move out of gold, which, which pays zero interest and move into an, an economy that pays a higher interest. If you have an economy that's paying 3% interest, that's better than zero, right? So that is why money will move out of gold when interest rates are going up. And then why will money move out of stocks when interest rates are going up? Because it's going to do exactly the opposite of what I've explained. It's going to hurt businesses. It's also going to hurt consumers, right? Why? Because higher interest means what? Higher interest payment on your loans. And most people have loans. Most consumers have loans, right? Uh, whether it's it's a it's a uh, mortgage loan, it's a vehicle financing, whether it's a personal loan, student loan, whatever it may be. If it's some form of debt, then it has what? It has an interest that is picked to it. So if obviously... Granted that it's not a fixed interest, of which for most it's not, for most economies, they don't, it's not generally not fixed interest. So when interest rates are going up, then it's going to hurt businesses. It's also going to hurt customers because they're now paying higher payments, right? Or higher interest payments. So as an example, uh, we have seven participants in this. Okay, seven in, with myself included. So it means that if interest rates started going up, and we, let's say we all had what we all had debt or, or let's say mortgage loans. And then if interest rates started going up, all of us will start feeling the pinch of higher interest because now we're paying more monthly than what we used to pay before. So it means that all seven of us can no longer afford to just go, uh, go and eat out, go into a restaurant and start, yeah, and eat out at our favorite restaurant or maybe go into a store and start buying Gucci or whatever we like to buy. Because why? Because we're feeling the pinch of higher interest rates. And remember, biz businesses need us because we are customers. And if a business has less customers, then the business makes less money. If the business has no customers, then the business goes out of business, right? Because the business is not in business. So essentially, all seven of us are feeling the pinch of higher interest rates. Then it means that the businesses are also going to feel a pinch of higher interest rates based on the debt that they have. And also because they're no longer getting as many customers, which means that now that is eating into their what? Into their profit margins. And so what are they going to do? They're going to start retrenching or laying off workers. And that is when unemployment starts ticking higher. So what is the assumption there? If interest rates are going up, the assumption is this is going to be negative for consumers. It's going to decrease consumer spending, which means that consumers are no longer going to spend money on businesses, which will also negatively impact businesses, which will mean what? So asset prices, sorry, asset prices will go lower or stock prices will go lower. And that is why we stock market tanks whenever interest rates are expected to go up. That is why indices tank whenever what? Interest rates are also expected to do what? Are expected to go up, right? So that is the basic premise guys when it comes to the relationship between interest rates and the different asset classes right is that clear let me let me hear let me hear a response yeah, yeah, yeah. okay and for everyone else is it clear did it make sense anything any anything i missed or you have a question on Uh, simple and straightforward uh, for me, Mr. Nana. Okay. And everyone else, guys, this is your opportunity. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll make an assumption that everyone, we all on the same page. So, um, real quick, man, Mr. Nana, sorry about that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we are having a situation, okay, since you, you made um, an example with the US dollar, I mean, yeah, well, uh, with, the toll, uh, with the data that we did have um, from the CPI and then to the PPI data. And now, um, I, as you said, we think, Mr. Manjo, we, the, the assumption is that um, uh, the central bank they need to to cut uh, interest 
in interest rate for them. And with the data that we, we got, yeah, well, uh, looking um, forward, looking at e inflation, um, yeah. and is expected to go lower. So the inflation expectations, yeah, well, so in this case, um, um, they are saying in some they are expecting maybe two rate cuts and stuff. So, so half as much market participants here. Yeah, well. So yeah. we we have to be uh, forward looking, uh, looking based based on what the inflation, the market participant uh, expectation on inflation. I'm not sure if I'm I'm putting it in a in a correct correct. Uh, I way get you. Get you. Yeah, maybe some of the uh, some of the group members as well. They can they can say in this regard. Yeah. So the market will move based on um interest rate uh, expectations or yeah, manage. Uh, let me not complicate it in any way. So yeah, but I think since you're saying that you do get my my point in this regard. Yeah, markets markets move based on future expectations, specifically interest rate expectations, right? So regardless of whether the central bank is is hiking or increasing interest rates right now, if inflation is way above their target and it's continuing to go up, then as market participants, we will expect interest rates to go up, right? Because they need to do what they need to increase interest rates to slow inflation. Because remember, we need to understand what actually produces inflation. There's two types. But essentially, I'll just stick to the to the ones that interest rates have a direct impact on, which is the what the demand side of inflation. So the reason why inflation goes up, it's based on what I explained earlier. When it it is cheap to borrow money, so businesses are growing and expanding. And if businesses are growing and expanding, they're hiring more people. And if they're hiring more people, now it means more people are getting paid. If more people are getting paid, more people can afford basic goods and services. So what will that do? That will result in an increase in the demand of goods and services and when that happens it means that businesses are now what getting an influx of customers so what how do they capitalize on that they raise their prices at the shop floor and that is essentially what inflation is so to reverse that we need to increase interest rates so that these people no longer spend as much with businesses which means what businesses are now going to face a reduced influx or not a reduced influx but a reduction in the number of customers because like i said all seven of us are now facing higher interest rates which means that we not we have less money every single month because most of our money is going into paying back our debt right interest on our debt so essentially that is how inflation is produced so that is how also inflation is or the attempts to reverse inflation is by increasing interest rates right so that is the direct impact of higher interest rates on inflation, right? So they cannot control inflation directly, but they control factors that produce inflation, which is what, which is consumer spending and businesses raising their prices because consumers are spending a lot, right? And then obviously if we need to lower inflation, we need to reverse all of that. But essentially that is how it goes. So that is with regards to the understanding of the relationship between interest rate expectations as well as uh, as well as uh, inflation, sorry, as well as the different asset classes. So that was principle number two, right? Which is interest rate expectations drive every other asset class in the financial market. So like I've just... So now principle number three, right? Of which we've also been able to answer what? Question number four, because we understand the relationship between what? Between interest rate expectations, sorry, between interest rate expectations as well as inflation, right? So now principle number three, because remember, we're just covering five basic principles. And if you understand this, then your trading should be simpler moving forward, or it should make some sort of sense, right? Then, then what it, it has been if you've only been trading with technical analysis. So number three is understanding or principle. The third principle is that interest rate differentials drive currencies, right? Bond investors follow the country, follow, follow the country paying the highest interest. So essentially, now we're going back to what I've just explained with interest rates, right? So we also have bonds and most most uh, most large institutions, right? They're also looking to make 
a return on investment, right? Via interest rates or via or, or via higher interest rates. So what will they do? If their economy is pay is, is has lower interest rates, then they're going to do what? They're going to look to invest their money abroad, right? Because maybe let's say another economy is paying higher interest rate interest rates than their what? Than their domestic economy, right? So what will they do? They'll start investing in a different economy, which means that now, as a perfect example, if we are if if a, a an investor in Japan, because Japan in, in interest rates in, in in Japan had been at zero and negative essentially. So it means that if they were looking to invest, they would look to invest abroad, maybe invest in the United States bonds, right? Buying US bonds. Why? Because US bonds are offering a higher interest, maybe, right? So 10 year, 10 year Japanese government bonds at an interest rate of zero. And in the US, the same 10 year, but US, US, US government bonds, they're offering an interest of 4.5%, low, let's just say 4%, then you can, it makes, it, yeah, it may, it's, it's, it's a no brainer essentially, right? So you'd look to invest in the 4% rather than the 0%. So what is happening? That means that large pension funds or big investors or insurance companies, whoever it may be in Japan, they what they shipping their money abroad to buy assets in what in other economies because they are paying a higher interest. So that now drives what drives weakness of the Japanese currency because they chasing what they because Japanese investors or whoever or, or institutions they chasing a higher interest in different what in another economy. So that is where that is why we saw what a huge weakness of the Japanese yen compared to, for example, the United States dollar. Because why? Because a lot of money was moving out of Japan and into the US dollar as interest rates continued to go up in the United States. So interest rate differentials drive currencies. If a currency has, has, has a lower interest, then money will move out of that currency into a currency with a higher interest. Obviously, that we also take into consideration a lot of things, but that is the primary driver of what of currencies the difference in interest rates and then of course it also comes to understanding that we also get a swap payment right so it's called a carry trade or an overnight carry trade so essentially if you are buying uh usd jpy because remember whenever we trade in currencies with currencies we do not trade them in singular, we trade them in pairs. So we trade currency pairs, right? So if you're buying USD JPY and we're trading Forex, so remember Forex just means foreign exchange. So you are exchanging. Always remember that you are exchanging. So if you're buying USD JPY and USD has an interest of 5.5%, Japanese yen has an interest of 0%, then it means that if we are buying USD JPY, we are doing an exchange, which means that we are borrowing Japanese yen at 0%, right? Which means that we pay 0% on that interest. We borrow Japanese yen at 0% so that we can buy the US dollar at 5.5%, right? So remember, we're borrowing Japanese yen at 0%. So that we can actually buy the dollar at 5.5 percent right so that is that is that that is the difference in the in, in the two interest in the interest rates of those two currencies or economies japanese yen has zero percent interest us dollar has 5.5 so if you're buying usd jpy as a trader if you go into your meta trader 4 and you buy usd jpy this is what what i'm explaining now is essentially what you're doing you're borrowing japanese yen at zero percent and you're using japanese yen to fund your purchase of the US dollar at 5.5, right? So it means that just like a smart investor, okay, sorry about that guys.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so essentially what it means is that you are borrowing 0% interest Japanese yen to buy 5.5% interest dollar, right? So now that essentially means that you have borrowed at a cheaper rate or interest to buy a currency with a higher interest. So now the broker needs to pay you a positive swap or a positive interest every single... Please mute your mic for holding what? Sure. For holding that currency or for buying USDJPY. So that is how you now accumulate interest every single night or a positive swap because you bought USDJPY because you, you took a lower interest rate currency to fund a higher interest rate currency. That is interest rate differentials driving economies. That is what we call an overnight carry trade, right? And then the opposite is also true. So if we now sell USDJPY, it means that we are doing an exchange again. Yeah. We are actually doing what? We are actually buying or we are borrowing the US dollar at 5.5 to buy Japanese yen at 0.1. So which means that we are getting charged an interest of 5.5% and we are earning 0% on our trade. So now that is why if we sell USDJPY, we will keep on accumulating a negative swap on our, on our trading account because we are on the opposite side of interest rates. We borrowed at a higher interest rate so that we can buy a currency that is going to offer a lower interest rate to the currency that we borrowed, right? But if we borrow a lower a, a currency with a lower interest rate so that we can buy a currency with a higher interest rate, then we get paid a positive swap by our broker. So every single night we hold, we have that position open regardless of whether it moves in our favor. As long as it, it is open, it has not triggered our stop loss and taken us out as long as it is open, we are getting a, what? a positive interest payment every single night. So that is an understanding of interest rate differentials. And then of course, if the if USDJPY rises or appreciates in value or the price goes up, then it means that you are now getting paid twice. You're earning interest every single night, but you're also getting paid because you're earning pips as the market moves in your direction, right? So that is also a third principle that we need to understand and you need to get good at, right? Not every single time you'll obviously be getting a positive swap, but try as much as possible for if you for 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 your trades, especially on currencies, to try and use interest rate differentials to your advantage, right? So that is principle number three, right? And then we're going to look at principle number four. So that is every data point should be assessed by its contribution back to inflation. So if you if so far it had not it has not clicked to you that inflation is important because inflation is a starting point. Because if we know inflation, then we understand that it drives interest rate expectations. If we know the direction we expect interest rates to go, then we will have an idea of what to do, of whether we buy or sell the currency, whether we buy or sell gold, whether we buy or sell indices, right? Or crypto. Crypto, we can we can put them in the same group as indices or stock or the stock market essentially, because they move pretty much the same way. We can view crypto as an alternative form of investment, right? So that is where that is the in the same class that we can we can put indices or the stock market in the same class as crypto, right? So like I, I was saying, if that has not clicked, then you obviously gonna have to rewatch this. But essentially what is important is understanding inflation. So now when I say that the fourth principle or the fourth basic principle is that every data point should be assessed by its contribution back to inflation. So it means that if we are now getting unemployment data for the United States, the question should be, how is this, number or figure that we got today how how will it impact inflation in the united states will it feed into inflation going up or will it feed into inflation going lower right or will it sorry subtract into inflation and and and, and result in inflation headed lower or heading lower right if we're getting um what other if we're getting wage wage, wage data right it is the same question how is this figure going to impact inflation Right, because once we have an understanding of inflation, then we essentially have a direction of 
what to do with everything else, right? That is, that is how basic this is. That is how simple this is, right? So you don't even have to go into a technical chart or anything just yet. You get a the true direction of where that currency, if you're looking to trade Forex or where that asset class, whether it's gold or stocks or, or indices, if you're looking to trade those different asset classes, right? By just understanding inflation and interest rate expectations, right? Then everything should center back to inflation. We're getting PMI data. How is that going to impact inflation for that specific economy? We're getting consumer confidence data. How is that going to impact inflation for that specific economy? Once we've answered that, then we know what to expect with interest rates. If we expect interest rates to go up, then it means we look to buy that currency and we look to sell all the other asset classes that are paid with that currency. It's as, it's as straightforward as that, right? So that is the fourth principle. And then the fifth, principle, fifth and last principle, as always, we save the best for last. It is that central banks will tell you their goals and data points to focus on. Because at the end of the day, just a interest rates are a tool that central banks actually use, right? So interest rates are a tool that central banks use. So central banks will tell you their goals and they will tell you which data points to focus on. Essentially, they'll be telling you the data points that they are focusing on. So in essence, it will be telling you these are the data points that they are focusing on. If a central bank is telling you, obviously, they are all focusing on inflation because it, it is inflation that dictates whether interest rates go up or lower. So they obviously focusing on inflation, but they will tell you maybe that for them, wage growth is more important, right? Please mute your mic. They will tell you that for them, wage growth is more important, right? So it means that for that specific economy, whenever you're getting wage growth related data, it is important because the central bank, the people who are actually who decide on interest rates or monetary policy, they actually said it that they are focusing on that specific data point, right? So that is the fifth and final basic principle that central banks will tell you their goals and the data points to focus on, right? So first principle is inflation. You need to understand in inflation and the fact that inflation drives interest rate expectations. We answer all those four questions. Then we need to understand that interest rate expectations drive every other asset class. And we've established the relationship between interest rates and currencies, as well as interest rate expectations and the other as and the different asset classes. Then interest rate differentials drive currencies. I've also explained that. And then every data point should be assessed by its contribution back to inflation. Every data point, regardless of what it is. If you're getting it, ask yourself, how is this going to impact inflation? Because if you answer that, then you will know whether you buy or sell if you're looking to trade that currency, right? And then lastly, central banks will tell you their goals and data points to focus on. Why? Because central banks, currencies or a currency or an economy is essentially the responsibility of that central bank. The central bank is mandated to ensure that inflation is stable around their target, whatever their target is, and also ensure that the economy is growing at a, at a, at a, at a smooth pace, right? Uh, there's no financial, uh, financial uh, disruption in the financial system, right? And all of those things, right? So if they are responsible for the currency and the economy, then it would be wise for us to also know what they are looking at, what they are planning to do, and how they are responding to the data, right? And obviously, like I said, they don't want to surprise the market most of the time because if they do that, then it will cause what I've just said. They don't want to see, which is a what? A disruption in the financial system, right? So that is why they will give us clues or they will tell us whether directly or indirectly what they are looking to do and what they are paying attention to. So that is why central banks are important. And that is why I say we, we left the best for last as the fifth trade as the fifth basic principle when it comes to trading so now we are going to take all of this absorb all of this and then now we are going to look at it from a trading perspective right because at the end of the day we this so that you can use it to actually trade so we're going to look at these principles and then see if whether we could have taken a direction 
based on what I've just uh, explained shortly in this for the past uh, what hour. Yeah, for the past uh, hour, right? So now, now we are going to go into the spreadsheet, right? So like I said, key thing is understanding inflation. Understanding inflation and where inflation is headed based on those uh those questions that that did that we that we that we ask under inflation, right? So now okay, so here's what I'm going to do. So we're gonna do a past example so that it makes sense. Then we're gonna look at most recent example so that it also makes sense. That like I said, this is universal, it's principles, right? And it's not a strategy, but it's principles. If you apply them for an economy, they do apply for the next economy, right? That's how it is. So we're going to be looking at 2021 when inflation was relatively low, beginning of 2021, because we had came out straight out of 2020. That is when we had lockdowns, COVID, so on and so forth, right? Then inflation was low. So we're going to look at the US dollar. Inflation was at 1.4 in January 2021, right? The, the target there is 2%. So the target for the United States or for the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank for the United States, their target is 2%, right? And remember, if inflation is above their target, then they try to lower inflation by doing what? By increasing interest rates. If inflation is below their target, they try to stimulate inflation going further towards the target by cutting interest rates. So they make money, money, money cheaper to borrow and so on and so forth. And then the whole cycle that I explained earlier begins, right? So in the United States, 2% is the inflation target for the Fed. Inflation was at 1.4%, January 2021, right? Then we went all the way up to September 2021. Inflation was sitting at 5.4, right? So now going back to what I've just explained, so we've established that inflation was at 5.4%. In around September 2021. So from January to September, inflation moved from 1.4 to 5.4%. So now let us go back to our slide. So now I'm going to ask the question, right? So please answer. Uh, you can unmute your mic. You can type in the chat, whichever you feel comfortable with. But now my first question will be, where is inflation in relation to the target, right? Is it above or below the target? Inflation is at 5.4. Okay. Okay. Then. Okay. Then now the second question is, is it rising or falling? So remember, everything is in reference to the target. If I'm asking, is it rising? I mean, is it continuing to move further above the target? Or is it falling, which means is it moving closer towards the target, right? So that is my second question. Is it rising or falling? Um, it's rising. Okay. Then... Now, in terms of inflation expectations, so obviously we need to look at inflation expectations on, on, on in terms of the central banks, what are they projecting of inflation? Are they increasing their expectations of inflation and so forth? And around that time, they were obviously increasing it, right? So I'm gonna tell you because it will take time for us to go into the actual central bank's website to get together all the data. So we've established that inflation is above the target, inflation is rising, then, in terms of inflation expectations, I've told you that infl inflation expectations were going up around that time. So now answering the fourth questions, what are the expectations of interest rates? Do you expect interest rates to go up or to go lower? Go higher. Okay. So if we are now expecting interest rates to go higher, now looking at the second principle, which is interest rates drive every other asset class, so does it mean that are you looking to buy or sell the actual dollar, the currency? Yeah, buy to buy. Okay, perfect. And then 
obviously, which means everything else we look to sell, right? Gold, so on and so forth, we look to sell. That is how it is. So that is the conclusion we've came to based on yeah. the data, right? So that is the conclusion we've came to, right? So let us go back. So that is the conclusion we came to for the dollar around September, 2021. And obviously when we trade in currencies, we do not trade them in singular, like I said, we trade them in what? We trade them in pairs, right? So we trade currencies in pairs. So in that case, then we need to look for another economy, which is doing almost the opposite of what we are seeing or witnessing with the dollar economy. Why? Because we're trying to find a divergence. That's another key thing. We're trying to find a divergence because if there is no divergence, which means that those economies are moving in the same direction because a divergence essentially means moving in opposite directions from a common point. So if they moving in opposite directions, now we have a trend because we have a stronger and a weaker. And then we now have a trending market. But if we're having two strong currencies or two weak currencies, then we have mostly a range bound or sideways market. That is what creates a, a trending market or what creates a range bound market. It's not just because of support and resistance on a chart. No, it's because relative to strength, there is no divergence. That is why we're having a range bound market. Or when we're looking at a price chart, we're seeing a range bound market. Because remember, fundamentals is the reason why markets move. Technical analysis is how they move. So what you're seeing there is how they are moving, but the reason for them moving that way, you'll get it on fundament you'll get it from fundamentals. So in that case, we needed to look for an economy that is showing weakness compared to the dollar, to the strength that we're expecting from the dollar, because we've concluded that we would look to buy the dollar, right? So in essence, the most obvious one around that time, and to today for most of the part, it's still the same. It was USDJPY. Why? Because USDJPY, oh, sorry, J the Japanese yen also has what? A 2% target. So if we're looking at the Japanese yen inflation, we're going to look at this the same time period. So for Japanese yen, it moved from negative 0 0.7 to September 2021, it was at 0 0.2, right? Their target is 2%. And remember, a central bank is always trying to achieve their 2% target. If it's below, they are trying to push it as much as possible towards the 2% target. If it's above, they are trying to lower it as much as possible towards the 2% target. So now looking at the Japanese yen, negative 0 0.7, to 0.2% around the same time when inflation in the United States was at 5.4%. So now going back to the very same question, where is inflation in relative in relation, sorry, or in reference to the to the actual target? Is it up, is it above or below? Below target. Okay. Then in turn, since it's below target, is it rising or falling? Dropping. Okay. It's essentially rising because it moved from negative 0 0.7 to 0 0.2. Yes, it's still far further, further away from their target, but it is rising. Okay. Someone in the chat actually said below, which is uh, that was also correct. So it is oh. rising, but then it's not going to push this the 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 bank of Japan, which is the, the central bank in Japan, to actually do what to actually at on it right <laughs> okay i almost gave it away but essentially that is the second question then the third question is uh okay the third question is that or fourth question essentially because third question is with interest rate expectation that like i said we'd have to go to the to the actual central bank and all of that but at that point interest rates were still ex inflation was still expected to be to be relatively low right because they for the Japanese economy, it's a very special case because they've been dealing with deflation, which is very low inflation. Deflation means, means extremely low inflation for close to 30 years, right? So for them, obviously, that is a norm. That was a norm. Let me put it that way for them, for inflation to be what? Below their target or to be very low, right? So expectations were still for the same thing to continue. But in essence, answering the fourth question now, what are your expectations on interest rates? We've established inflation is below their target, right? And obviously they expect inflation to remain below their target. So what are your expectations of interest rates? Should interest rates go up or should they go lower? Okay. 
Okay, someone also answered in the chat, they should decrease 100%, spot on, right? So now we have two economies, because remember when we're trading currencies, we're trading two economies. So we have one economy that is showing weakness, one economy that is showing strength. So now we can put the two together and we have a trade idea. We haven't even went onto a chart, but we now have a trade idea. We know the direction. We've established the direction, right? Because we have, we've, we now have this understanding of these basic, the five basic principles. So now we're going to look at an actual chart around the same time of USD JPY, right? Okay, guys, so my trading view is taking forever to load. So I'm just giving it a bit of time uh, to actually load. But essentially, we are now going to look at a chart example of what we've just established, what, what we've all came to the conclusion of, essentially, that we're looking to buy USD JPY, right? Based on what we saw with inflation, and then the basic understanding of that inflation drives interest rate expectations. So which means that we're expecting interest rates to go up in the US expecting interest rates to go lower in the Japan in the Japan in Japan's economy, then it means that what? We then look to buy USD JPY as a currency pair. So <clears throat> um, USD JPY. Okay, so now we have USD JPY on the screen. So this was around, we came to that conclusion around September, 2021, right? So, so let's put it at the end of September. It was around here, right? So that is when we made that conclusion that we're looking to buy USD JPY based on the facts, obviously, of what we saw based on fundamentals, right? That was our conclusion. Then what I'm also going to share with you right now is what we call the bond yield. Because remember, when I explained interest rate differentials and explained how investors look to buy bonds of a foreign currency, of a foreign economy, because if their own uh, bond yield, which is interest on the bond, is actually zero or less, then they look to invest in what? In, 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 foreign, in, foreign, in foreign bonds, right? They look to buy foreign bonds right or look look to buy bonds abroad essentially so uh okay so essentially that is what happens right so now i'm going to share with you uh, a, 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 it's a tool that you can also use, but we're going to look at it. Uh, we're going to look at the US one, right? Because obviously we're focusing on the United States dollar. It's the US 10 year, right? So that is essentially the interest on a 10 year bond, which is the US 10 year government bond yield, essentially, right? It's called the US 10 year. So that is what we are going to add onto our charts, right? And then, okay, let, let us use it in a different scale. Scale to left. 
Okay, all right. So I need to do this here so that it does not interfere. Can you live skill? Yeah. Okay. So now, okay. So now, black and white, it's USD JPY currency, then in green and red. That is the US 10 year bond yield, which is essentially the benchmark yield or benchmark interest in what? In the United States, right? It's for the 10 year bond yield, right? So essentially, going back to what, I've ex what I explained earlier, that interest rates or interest rates drive the different asset classes. So essentially, you can look at the bond yield in the same light that if it's going up, then you would expect US dollar to appreciate or strengthen if it's going lower then you would expect us dollar to weaken right so we're just gonna use it as an example here or just layer it on on our on our chart as well right as you can clearly see it almost moves in tandem right it almost almost mimics one another between usd jpy and the us 10-year bond yield but essentially you can see that we would have came to that conclusion around september 2021 right and we're looking for what? For buying opportunities on USDJPY. What happened? USDJPY pushed higher, moved sideways a bit, and then it continued, and then it started ripping to the upside, right? That was around March 2022, right? And the reason why it started going up so aggressively, it is because in March 2022, that is when interest rates started going up in the United States. Remember, remember, you expected interest rates to already, or not already, but you expected interest rates to go up in September 2021, right? So the central bank themselves only started increasing interest rates in March 2022. So already you were early to the party. You were one step ahead, if I may like, if, if I may put it, right? And that is how it always is when it comes to fundamentals. You are most of the time, you are generally early to the party. Obviously, that's if you're always keeping yourself up to date with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, interest with the uh, with with the actual uh, fundamentals, and you know what's happening and all of that. You are generally what early to the party, right? Not to say if you just decided today to look at fundamentals, then you are early to know. You need to know what has happened prior prior to where we are today for you to have an idea of whether you're early to the party or not. But most of the time, if you're always up to date, you're always early to the party. But essentially, the point I'm trying to make here is that you knew the direction before the chart actually started confirming to everyone that, okay, now we're pushing higher, we're in an uptrend, because this is the weekly time frame. So if you probably go into the daily time frame, we're starting to see an uptrending structure. Already at that point, you would have positioned yourself to be buying the, the, the Japanese yen, right? Sorry, USD JPY, right? Selling the Japanese yen, right? So that is the importance of fundamental, right? Because you have an idea of the direction, the medium to long-term direction, you're clear on that. And everyone in this, in this, in this Zoom room actually came to the same conclusion, right? Most, most, yeah, most of us actually came to the same conclusion that we would have been looking dollar without looking at a price chart right so this is how i would like you to approach your trading if you want to simplify your trading look at the data understand what's happening with inflation then interest rates and then how it drives the different asset classes so this is what we had around here right so then march 2022 interest rates started going up in the united states now it's official what you've been expecting all this time for the past what five months five months or so has finally happened, right? You were already on, you were, you were, you were already in the position and mind you, interest rates in the United States were at 0.25%. In Japan, interest rates were at negative 0.25%. So remember what we spoke about earlier as well, the overnight carry trade. 
interest rate differentials as well. They're working in your favor. So you've been holding, you've been holding all along. So since you've been holding all along, what is now happening? You've been getting or accumulating a positive interest. As long as you were in this position, maybe even if you were in this position since September, you've been accumulating a positive interest in as small as it might be. Because remember the interest you're accumulating is the difference between the two interest rates. So 0 0.25, and negative 0 0.1, the difference there is what you're accumulating per annum, obviously, because remember, interest rates are annualized, right? So per annum. So even though it's small, but you're actually getting paid for just holding the position, right? And then obviously, when interest rates eventually started increasing in the United States, you, you started getting paid more every single night for holding the trade, right? But that is now we, we implementing or we applying everything we've learned or those five principles into this trade, right? Then the market continued pushing higher almost for the whole of 2022. And then around October 2022, that is when what? That is when we can see that USD JPY made a high. And we can also see that bond yields also what? The US 10 year bond yield also what? Made a high in October 2022, and then it started going lower and we saw a massive sell-off in USDJPY. So now, based on everything that I've, I've taught you till this point, if we are looking at the US 10-year bond yield, which is essentially driven by what? Inflation. And we can see that it is going lower. Give me your best guess. What do you think is the reason why the US 10-year bond yield started going lower? Why interest rate expectations started going lower? Anyone, just give me your best guess. Uh, inflation, inflation is is uh, is dropping. Yes, one hundred percent. Because inflation drives interest rates. So, uh, so beautifully said, so beautifully said there, it is because inflation drives interest rates, right? So, the reason, the most obvious reason for interest rates to start falling and the, for the dollar to start falling, it is not essentially because it hit a resistance. It is probably because inflation is going lower, right? So now let us try and confirm that or disprove that actually. So now, as you can see, going back to the spreadsheet, that was October, 2022. So if we're looking at October 2022, we can see that inflation in the United States was at 7.7, .7, right? So it had moved from 5.4 in September, moved all the way to 9.1 in June 2022. That, that was the high that inflation made in, in June 2022. Then July 8.5, sept September, sorry, August 8.3, September 8.2. So inflation had been falling for three months, like you accurately uh, guessed it. It had been falling for three months, and that's the reason why now interest rates were expected to go lower. Not because the central bank was cutting interest rates, because remember, we expected interest rates to go up in, in September 2021, but they only increased interest rates in March. So also the same thing here. Stressing the point that I made earlier, that markets move based on future expectations. Based on inflation, the fact that it has been falling for three months, that's giving us a trend. So it means that now we are expecting interest rates to go lower, right? And the same, see as well, if you're looking at the Japanese yen,
So as you can see, if we are looking at uh, at the Japanese yen, that when it comes to the Japanese yen, interest inflation was at 3%, which is above their target, right? So now expectations were that what? Interest rate will probably start going up in the in the what? In the in the Japanese economy or for the Jap for the Japanese economy. So what does that now do? It's also creating that sort of divergence in what? In interest rates, because we have interest rates going up. Sorry, uh interest rates expectations now going lower, or interest rates being expected to go lower in the United States, but what interest rates being expected to go higher in Japan because of inflation being above their target, and that is essentially why we saw the move that was happening here. That is why interest the US dollar started going lower. And then we also saw what interest rates expect, which is the 10-year bond yield, also starts to push lower. And that is essentially the relationship between inflation, interest rate expectations, as well as the currency. Right. And then obviously every single time you're seeing this ebb and flow based on what you're getting from the data based on inflation, what is happening there and every other data point that you're getting, whether it's unemployment and you're centering it or assessing it in relation to how it's going to impact inflation, then you get clear on the trend every single time. Right. And this is how I do it. This is how I show people or teach other people how to do it, because it's a more simplified approach because you're working on principles. And like I said, it works for any economy, not only for the, U for the United States, right? So this is in essence how this actually works, right? So now we're gonna look at different asset classes as well, because we are supposed to establish what I've said so far, if whether it's true or not, right? Because if we're looking to buy the currency, then we look to sell all the other asset classes, which means we're looking to sell gold in this case, we're looking to, sell uh, indices, so on and so forth, right? So now, so let us start with, uh, let's start with indices, right? Gonna start with the US 500. So we are going to look at the very same, same time period. Okay, so around the very same time period, September 2021, and we came to the conclusion we're looking to buy the dollar, which means we're looking to sell indices, right? What happened? Indices continued pushing higher, and then they continued. We were trying to sell all along, probably losing money because it kept on going higher. And then eventually, what happened? Beginning of 2022, they started to drop. And then when interest rates started going up in March 2022, what did we see? We saw a further drop in indices because they go in the opposite direction to interest rates as well as interest rate expectations. And then what happened around October 2022? Like we had highlighted earlier, when inflation had been falling for three months, so inflation had moved from an uptrend to now in a downtrend. So it means that infl interest rates should follow the same direction, which is downtrend, which means that now we're expecting interest rates to go lower. What happened? We saw bottoming out of what? Of indices. Because remember, indices go in the opposite direction to interest rates. So that is why we saw US 500 start to go higher. It made a bottom and it has been going higher ever since. But we can also... 
we can also clearly see the relationship that when bond yield starts to fall, indices what? They start pushing higher, as you can see. When indices are falling, it's because bond yields or interest rates are pushing higher, right? So we can clearly see the relationship there. So we can clearly see how by just understanding inflation and those principles that we covered, you can have, you know, the direction of the different asset classes from the currencies to gold. So there's no, there's essentially no need for you to be fearful of trading gold, for you to be fearful of trading indices. If you are clued up and you understand clearly what is happening from a macroeconomic standpoint, by that I just mean economic indicators, inflation, interest rates, unemployment, so on and so forth, and how all of that feeds into inflation and how that will drive interest rate expectations and then how the different asset classes will move based on the expectations of interest rates, right? So that is what we can clearly see here with, with uh, US 500, right? And then obviously we can also, we're going to also going to look at Bitcoin because remember I said Bitcoin is essentially an alternative form of investment to the stock market. That is how we need to view Bitcoin, right? Especially now that there are Bitcoin ETFs and all of that, right? So looking at Bitcoin, we can clearly see that around October, September, 2021, what happened? Bitcoin shot up when we're expecting it to go lower. That is when interest rate, we're expecting interest rates to go high in the US, right? So that means that we were looking for selling opportunities on Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up, then eventually it started to fall, right? And then come March, 2022, when interest rates started, officially started going up in the United States, what did we see? Bitcoin, we saw a larger drop in Bitcoin. Then come October, 2022, when, when inflation had been falling in the United States for three months, then we expected what? Interest rates to go lower in the United States, which means that we're now looking to sell the dollar and obviously buy crypto, buy gold, buy, buy uh, stock market and all of that. What happened? Bitcoin bottomed out. As you can see, Bitcoin bottomed out shortly after October, around November, it bottomed out. And then what happened? It started going higher, right? And then obviously it has been going higher since, right? But essentially, the point I'm trying to make you understand or to, to, to stress on or what I'm trying to make you understand is that you can forecast these moves if you understand what is happening. If you understand, sorry about that. If you understand what is happening with inflation, this bottoming out of crypto, you would have anticipated it. So you would have anticipated this bottoming out of crypto, right? So we would have anticipated that crypto is going to bottom out. Why? Because inflation had been falling for three months. And then you're now looking to do what? Looking for interest rates to go lower in the United States and then looking to buy what? Buy the actual cryptocurrencies, right? And then that is essentially what happened. But you can know or expect these moves ahead of time before they actually come into fruition by just understanding what is happening with inflation and interest rates right and then of course the same applies with uh with uh gold the same applies with okay let me just show you we'll just look at gold in closing Okay, so as you can see with gold as well, right? Around September, when we were looking to, 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 to sell gold, right? What was happening? Gold continued to push higher. And then eventually, when interest rates started going up in March 2022, that is when gold formed a high and then it started going lower because gold is in black and white candlesticks, right? Started going lower. 
When did it bottom out? Around September 2022, October, September 2022, when inflation had been obviously going lower in the United States, so interest rates were expected to go lower. So you could have forecast, not essentially forecast, but anticipate the move to happen because you have clear evidence that inflation has been going lower for three months and a new trend has established, right? You're not guessing whether it says support resistance that will hold or not, but you have clear factual evidence. And that is the differentiator between using fundamentals to identify or to get your trade your trade direction and then going to a technical chart. Now I know that I'm looking to buy gold around October, 2023, sorry, 2022. So all that I'm focusing on when it comes to a technical price chart, I'm looking for the market to drop to a support resistance or to a demand zone, and I'm looking to buy. Now that is when we factor in technical analysis. So it doesn't mean technical analysis is useless, but technical analysis is used as a filter to identify whether now is the right time to buy or sell, not as a direction. Because remember, technical analysis is showing you how the markets move. Fundamentals show you why they move, which means you get their direction from the why so that the how can make sense, right? So when, when you know the direction based on fundamentals, then technical analysis makes sense. You're no longer confused when it comes to technical analysis. But essentially, this is what happened, right? And then obviously, when, as you can see, bond yield started peaked around October 2023 and started going lower, what happened? We saw gold shoot higher, obviously, also because of the war that broke out in, 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 in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas that also fueled gold because now investments were moving into gold. Because remember what I said earlier, gold is a safe haven asset. It's a good storage of value. So in times of uncertainty, markets move, or capital, sorry, move flows back into gold, right? So essentially, that is why we saw a very strong appreciation in gold. But essentially, that is what I wanted to share, that have an idea, have a clear understanding of the five principles uh, that I've just that I shared and understand how they actually work together, the relationship between all of them. And then that will help you trade better, make better trading decisions, and just avoid mistakes that are necessarily costing you money in the financial markets because you are guessing the direction. Yes, you can guess the direction, but from here forward, don't guess the direction. Stop guessing the direction in the, in the financial markets. If you have a clear understanding of, of fundamentals, there's no need for you to guess the direction. And that is essentially uh, what I wanted to share, right? That this is how I do it. And it's not because of me. It's not because I'm all great Google Gaga. No, 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 guys. It's not, it's not essentially because of that. It's just because I follow these principles. And obviously I double down on them. I expand more on them but this is the basic framework. This is like the foundation. And then everything else you build on top of this, then it will simplify your trading, right? But essentially that brings us to the end of today's session. So I do see a hand up, uh, feel free. If, you, if it's a question, then you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about, you talked about um, divergences between uh, currencies, right? The interest rates to know what you call it, which markets are, are ripe to, to trade, right? Um, mm -hmm. is, there, is there like a range you're looking for? Because uh, the example that you gave, um, I'm looking at this right now in the, uh, what you call it, when when the US, when inflation basically was um, <clears throat> around like 8.3% and then uh, Japan's was around 25 That was when what you call it, uh, you saw a major surge in, in the example that you showed, right? But yeah. currently, yeah. it's there's still a divergence, but it's not as much as it was before. So is there like a, a threshold that you're looking for to detect like these uh, sweet spots to like trade? I wouldn't really say there is a threshold, but remember what I also uh, stated that this is the foundation. So we're building everything on top of that. So now we're looking at, the bigger picture of, of the two economies, right? This is this is the introduction basic. So we're now looking at the bigger picture. Okay. Yes, there's still a divergence between the US, the, the, the US, the US and the Japanese. Yes, interest rates are relatively high in the US than, than in the Japanese, but then also expectations. What are the expectations? Are, 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 are markets expecting interest rates to go lower next month? 
for example, in the US compared to that and then expecting them to go high in the Japanese. And so all of those things, those are essentially are what interest rate expectation, right? Obviously, like what I was also saying by looking at the bigger picture, you take into totality, what is the central bank saying? On Friday, just gonna just gonna give a perfect example because it's something that happened most recently. Friday, we had the what Bank of Japan interest rate uh, meeting or decision, right? What did they do? They obviously held interest rates. They hiked, they increased interest rates in March, but they've held interest rates. But what did they do? They say they're gonna scale back on buying bonds. Buying bonds is essentially this. It it has an not equivalent, but a similar impact as cutting interest rates, right? So they're saying now we're gonna scale back on the amount of bonds we are buying per month. But we are not going to do that today, which was on Friday. We are going to do that, or we are going to relay um, the details of our decision in the next meeting, right? So essentially, so essentially, they were telling us that they are going to tighten financial conditions or shift towards interest rates being higher and shifting away from lower interest rates. But then they did not say we are going to maybe start or decrease our 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 bond buying program by this much. Then will they will relay all of that when in the next meeting, which is in July. So all of that is now creating what an anticipation or expectations that interest rates are now going to start going higher. We're in Japan. So now, yes, we still have that positive carry trade if you were to buy USD JPY because remember, it doesn't change. Interest rates are still high in the US. But now, since expectations are no longer as wide in terms of the differentials in interest rates, they are now going to start converging unless we get further disappointment from the Japanese uh, side of things. They they then come out maybe next month and be like, based on the data that we had between the meeting in June to the meeting in July, we're no longer confident in lowering or on, we're no longer confident in what? In, in decreasing the amount of bonds we are buying. So now they're doing a U-turn on us or a pivot on us, right? So the market will, will view that as negative and they'll start selling the Japanese yen. And on the other hand, let's say the dollar, they'll be like, inflation starts picking up and they're like, okay, we're going to look to cut interest rates next year. Let's say that is what the Fed said. We're going to look to cut interest rates in 2025 because already they're pricing in only one interest rate cut in 2024, right? Based on what, on their projections, that they that they released in June in their meeting on Wednesday, they projected that they're now going to look to cut only once this year, right? But in January or in March, the projections in March were in, uh, uh, pricing in three interest rate cuts. So now they've pay, they've scaled back from three interest rate cuts to two to one, two or one essentially in the United States. And then if we have some negativity from the Japanese side, then that will maintain the interest rate differentials. But what, what I'm essentially trying to say is that you need to have a clear picture in the totality. And then not only looking at interest rates, look at all the other factors as well. Is there a divergence there? Perfect example is, uh, okay, there's also uh, an interest rate divergence there, but Euro NZD, I went short Euro NZD. Why? Because Euro inflation is close to that and obviously they start they've already started cutting interest rates right and then on the other hand we have new zealand where inflation is way above their target and they've came out in their last meeting in may and they said based on their projections they are pro they are projecting that they only going to consider interest rate cuts next year in 2025 we're not even halfway of 2024 and that is what they are saying so that is what is regarded as being hawkish right so now it's creating what a divergence between interest rate expectations of those two economies and that is why i went short euro nzd yes euro has lower interest rates than new zealand so i was also getting a positive interest payment because there was an interest rate differential but the spread is not as wide as something as usd jpy as well as uh, sorry, between the dollar and the Japanese yen, it's much more narrower, but it's still positive. So there isn't really a threshold. It all comes together with the bigger picture, the totality of everything. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, thank you. Um, one one more thing that I was uh confused about. Can we can we go back to the the actual sheet that you were showing earlier? The the spreadsheet. Yeah.
Well, my, my question is, um, from my understanding of things, um, the, the one about the, the relationships between the, the market's currency inflation. Yeah. Yeah, for, from my understanding, bonds are, are the, the instrument that uh, exposes, uh, gives exposure to, to what you call it, interest rates, right? But in the, in the, in the data that you had over there, it had, it had bonds inversely correlated to um, interest rates. Um, I'm wondering yeah. why. Yeah, because remember, bonds, bonds is government debt and every bond has a yield. And yield is essentially interest and bond, bond and the bond yield go in the opposite direction. When the price of bonds go higher, it suppresses the yield, the interest. So that is why there is a negative, there is an op or inversely correlated relationship between the bond and the bond yield. So when you, interest rates are expected to go lower, then the, the price of bonds goes higher, which is why when, when interest rates are being expected to go lower, as an example, in the US, then you start seeing what more, maybe you'll start reading an article where one of the biggest bond players, PIMCO, they releasing that they getting they see more more what more purchases of bonds of U.S. Treasuries because that is what they are called because their relationship there is inversely proportional. Okay, okay, yeah, I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's it for me. Okay, uh, what other questions do we have, guys? Before we wrap it up, before we've, we've already been going, you're close to two hours. It's been a long one than I expected. Uh, what other questions do we have? If there aren't any, then we're going to wrap it up. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, guys, so... Uh, all good for me. Okay, sorry about that. Can you? Oh, all good. All good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to check. Will this uh, okay, be guys. So I think we're gonna. Will this recording be uploaded? Because I think I joined in late and due to power issues. Yeah, I will well, upload it on YouTube. Okay, thanks. Then I'll benefit from the the where it started from. Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it on YouTube. Okay, guys. So I think we're gonna call it a night. Uh, because it seems like there aren't any questions, which means everything was clear. I hope it was clear, because it means that people will now start seeing changes in their trading. But essentially, thanks you once again for your time and for tuning in. And uh, cheers, guys until we meet next time. Okay, okay, cool. See you later. All right. Cheers, cheers. Thank you.